Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday in September. Can we believe it? Like, I know it was already September last week. Was it September last week or it was almost, it was? But we were still, we were still hoping, holding on to summer, whereas we're in September. Welcome to Calvary. My name is Rhonda and it is great to have you here this morning um, as people are trickling in and signing in online. We want to welcome you here. Um, and uh, why don't you turn and say hello to someone or kind of do a little a pew scooch and say hi to, uh, to someone in particular, maybe someone you don't know or haven't seen in a little while. Give a wave, give a hello. If, uh, if you noticed, this, this side of the church is look, looking a little, little fuller. Well done, filling up my illusion. So this is our crew from Backfield Fest. So Backfield Fest was a ministry that started um, a couple years ago out of actually out of a dreaming and stirring um, time that we had here. And, and some of our people said, I can see people in our, and are using our property in the back to worship. And we're like, okay, let's start making that look like something. Um, and it turned into this really beautiful time of worship and fun and, and community together. Um, and that really built up. And then we had to pause it for a bit. And we're, we're all navigating what this looks like, kind of relaunching, re-stepping into a fall that that we get to do some more of the things that draw us together. And so there was around 40 uh, youth and young people uh, who gathered in our backyard space. We had an inflatable um, obstacle course and bonfire, and we had worship led by uh, some of our very own youth and young people, uh, as well as some of our friends from our extended camp community. Um, and yeah, just a rich time to be together. And about half of them, or this crew, the, the crew that's looking a little, you know, maybe disheveled um, and beautiful, uh, they're the ones who slept out in some tents last night, and so we're really excited. So a big welcome to you guys. Thanks for being a part of our Calvary worship this morning. Uh, a few other announcements. If you are just joining us online, feel free to say hello in the chat. We love knowing who's worshiping with us uh, on that platform. And uh, check out the links below uh, if you are looking for prayer afterwards, looking on how to give as well. We will be um, celebrating communion this morning. So if you're worshiping at home with us, you might want to gather some elements to participate later in the service. Uh, also, at the end of the service, we will, like always, offer prayer ministry. We love to create space for you to continue to maybe unpack something that was stirred in you during the service or just um, have some help bringing something uh, to God or hearing a blessing um, from him, from one of our prayer team members. And so we're actually going to be doing that back in the corner in the sanctuary, um, as well as there is a link um, below. So would love to have that chance to pray for you. Also, uh, if you are um, new here or if you are trying to figure out how, does, how do we do offering and, and that sort of thing, there is a box at the back or you can um, check out our webpage for different opportunities to give. All right. Um, one, just one last quick announcement is as we're trying to figure out you know, relaunching things, renavigating things. Uh, we used to have this lovely thing called Coffee Hour and Coffee Fellowship. So we're going to be figuring out how to launch that. And like a lot of things, we get to figure out how to do that with fresh eyes and fresh heart. So if you would be interested in either helping vision what we want that time to look like, um, what that could be, if you like organizing people and maybe organizing a list, um, we would love to have some people help coordinate what that could look like. Um, or if you're like, I just like to serve. I would love to just be a part of a team that, you know, is on rotation to help serve coffee, stay a little later after the service to do some cleanup. We'd also love that. So um, maybe something you did in the past and we're on rotation, you're like, I'm back in. Put me in, coach. 
or you're just like, hey, I could, I could do that. Um, please let me know, reach out to me, sign up, and uh, we'll get that going. But as a little teaser, because we had um, Backfield Continental Breakfast and Lighthouse Leaders launch, there's actually some um, leftover Continental Breakfast muffins, fruit, coffee, juice. So if you do want to stick around, and uh, enjoy some fellowship after the service. Please head into the gym um, and enjoy that together. So I think that's all the announcements because I want to be able to jump in and uh, continue to see what God wants to do. So I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able um, and comfortable this morning to posture ourselves uh, before God and say, God, here I am in my fullness body, mind, soul, heart, and I want to offer myself to you. And as we sing these songs, if they're familiar, um, if they're new, if they spark something, God, we just want our attention to be drawn to you because we know that your attention is on us this morning. So God, thank you for the ways that you see us. Thank you for the ways that you want to speak to us this morning. And so God, we come to you as we are, recognizing who you are. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together. Good morning. Uh, my name's Drew. If you're visiting, it's good to have you here. Um, and as we kind of wind back into the, the fall, uh, I was uh, at the cottage last weekend and, um, um, and got to be, you know, packing up the boats and all those things. Um, so I just wanted to take you in. This is just in case you're like, you're, you're like sitting through this part of the service and you're going, is that just the preamble to the sermon? This is how the day's going to go, Okay. Message now. <laughs> Response to the message, we're going to reflect on what you've been hearing. So I'd actually encourage you, if you have a pencil or a paper, paper um, and there is pencils and paper at the back, and I totally feel great about, you know, get up, grab one. Uh, I really feel like God wants to say specific things to us. You can pull out your phone and your little notes app if you want to, uh, as long as you stay off the social media, just for, you know, like, <laughs> hey, Elizabeth. We'll know if you're doing it because you're doing like this and stuff. So, because I really think God wants to say some things to each one of us today, and he may use a song, he may use the words we're talking about, but he wants to speak to you because he loves you, and he wants to have you make room in this hour for him, but also room in your life for him to work because he has good intentions for you. So paper at the back, Braden's at the back. If you want, if you wanted to just wave your hand, Braden would love to, oh, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, grab some papers and pencils and hand them out. So I'm going to take you in, message, response to message, then we're going to move into communion, which is such a beautiful way to do that. And, um, and at that time, I think we're going to spend a little bit of time praying for our world, okay? So if you came today going, the world is a mess, I just need to hear something, we're going to start with what's God saying to you. We're going to move into communion where is what God gave to you, and then we're going to pray for the world. Uh huh? I know you didn't think we think about these things, but we do. Okay, so can we put up that first slide, Steve? So at the cottage, um, this, you're going to see a picture of a boat. And, and my, uh, my cousin, this is my cousin's family, uh, and that's the little boat I want to talk about. So my cousin, uh, I, we're up at a cottage, and I've got this old boat and found this motor on Kijiji uh, about four or five years ago and spent very little on it. I brought it up to the cottage and paid for somebody to check it out and fix it up. And when I did pay for them to fix it up, uh, they charged me more than the motor cost the first place to fix it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> skip, ahead a few, skip ahead a few years. So I had this thought to myself, like, how hard can it be to winterize a motor? Right? So, one YouTube video later, I go and I feel, you know, drain the crankshaft. I don't know anything I'm talking about, so just so you can mock, mock me. You know, fill up the gear oil there, you know, fog the thing for any water, you know, dr run, some, run some stabilizer through it. Huh? 
You're impressed, I know, because <laughs> this is what one three-minute YouTube video does for you. And, and so this is the boat. And, and so this was four years ago, and it worked every year. And so this, this summer, I, like my, my, uh, my cousin and their family, they, they love to get on the water. They were up there, and I said, why don't you take the boat? We're not going to be there. And so my, my cousin, uh, her husband is from Ecuador, and he's very dramatic. And so he comes up to me when we come up to the cottage after he's had this boat for a couple weeks, and he goes, Hey, your boat, it goes vroom, put, 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 <laughs> and then vroom, put, put, put. So you go for 20 minutes and then it goes vroom, 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 vroom. And so I'm kind of embarrassed and in my head I'm thinking, one YouTube video didn't prepare me for this. And so I'm kind of embarrassed, and I'm looking at him, and so I'm at, at the cottage, and there's some of uh, our, my kids' friends are there, and so I, 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 just, I just happened to overhear one of them talking about how in shop class, he's 20 now, and he, in shop class, he took apart a, a lawnmower motor, and I thought, aha, an expert, <laughs> right? And so, so I, said, I said, what was going on? And he said, well, did you check the spark plugs? I said, oh. In, in my head, I'm thinking, there's spark plugs? <laughs> they didn't mention that in the YouTube video. And, and so then I thought, oh, that's what I'm going to do the next YouTube video. Here's the point that I want you to keep in your head. I still haven't fixed it. And as I was describing it, I was secretly hoping that a mechanic here would go, I know what the problem is, and you'll tell me what to do. But have you done a winter tune-up for your car or for something else? Have you done a spring tune-up for your car or something else? It really helps to know what parts need to be looked at, right? It really helps to know. I didn't know there was a spark plug that I was supposed to check. Apparently, it's a matters. There's the same thing happens in our hearts, our spirits, our lives. And so today, heading into communion, I want to set us up to just do a tune-up. But not just do a tune-up, but to, pr to provide some, like, here's how God works in our lives so that throughout the next weeks, you can allow God to start pointing out the parts in you, spiritual parts, that might need some tweaking so that you don't go, vroom, put, 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 put. right? Maybe some of you this morning, we're going to pray in a second, but some of you this morning came here feeling like, I am already or I'm stuck out in the middle of the lake and there's no way to get back. Or maybe some of you are like, things aren't running quite like they're supposed to. And we just want to take some time today as we prepare for communion to move you into that. Last week, uh, I was reading a book by a friend of mine published a book about uh, he, he, Jiva and Sologina. They published a book about marriage called The Unbreakable Marriage. And so I was reading it because uh, they gave me a free one. And, uh, and I was reading through it. And they, they told about this one, one uh, couple that came to them. And they said, you know, as, as counselors tend to do, like, what brings you here? And, and so the, 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 the man said, like, well... There's this one day, and it's, I knew as soon as I got up, as soon as my foot touched the floor, I knew it was going to be a bad day. You know how you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, he said. And I got going, and then I came down, and I said something to my wife, and she said, oh, no, you didn't just say that. And I thought, what did I say? And so, but instead of responding, I said, yes, I did. And then she said, oh, no, you didn't. And then it went from there. And some things were said, he said. Meanwhile, his wife is sitting here like this. And so the day went on, he describes. He, the day went on, and it, it became this big fight where they had both said things. And, and at the end of the day, he went to his go-tos. He wanted to reconnect. He wanted to, like, pave it over and just put it away. This probably never happened to you, so just go with me. Uh, maybe in a friendship or relationship. But... Uh, um, then, then, the, then he says, so I did the things I always do. I came back and I said, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said those things. Please forgive me. And she didn't say anything. And it was very chilly that night. And then he, then he said, I, did, I, I went out and got flowers. And I brought them back and I gave them to her. And I went like this. And she went like this. 
And he thought, I, you know, I, I, I gave her flowers. I said sorry. I did things for her. I tried to give her a hug, like to reconnect. Like, what's going on? So he did something for her body to connect physically. He did something for the words, the, it's, you know, for the soul. Like, but there's something missing. And that's where they went with counseling. Like, the stuff you did hurt her spirit. You know, people aren't just body, and people aren't just soul, how we encounter the world. People are also spirit. And you have to know which part was hurt so you can restore it. And that's what they started working on. So you, know, you need to track back. Car, or I mean boat, motor. I'm hearing this about the parts. Then I hit read this thing about the thing. Then I'm going running last week, and I'm running, and, a, and it was a friend of mine who's a counselor that was on a podcast called The Toddcast, which is worth listening to. Anyways, and she was talking about when I meet, when I meet a couple, you got, you got to understand, track that this is, these are coincidences that don't often happen to me. I'm running, and then she says, when I meet with a new customer, they say I do a heart check of their body, of their soul of their spirit. I thought, oh no. Because usually when these... We need to do a heart check on our microphone. Uh, usually when these things are happening, when God brings up something over and over and over again, it's for a reason. So I go, okay, I finished that podcast, I put on another one, just random selection. This guy named Graham Cook. I'm running and he says, there's the soul and there's the body but there's also the spirit. At this point, I stop. I look up at the heavens and say, okay. <laughs> I realized for you and I today that it's worth us hearing this scripture. It's worth us. It's worth us. Steve, can I get a new mic? Do you mind? Yep, you got it? Good. It's worth, it's worth us looking at our heart, our soul, and our mind, our body, soul, and spirit, Scripture says. And so in, in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says this. And this is Paul, and this is also a Scripture I ran across this week in the midst of I get it. And I realized this is a really good pulse check for you and I. How are we doing in our body? How are we doing in our soul and how are we doing in our spirit let me read this to you now may the god of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless until the lord jesus christ comes again so steve can you pop up the first circle so the body is pretty simple, right? You know, you know what this is. Like, it's how you touch the world. It's the things that you impact and the things that impact you. It's how you intersect with the world around you. But scripture says, and this is what Paul is saying, you need to know that it's not just your physical part that affects you. So over here on this side, you may be sensing the tiredness and the sleepiness starting to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe it's just physical, but maybe your tiredness isn't related to your, what your body is experiencing. Maybe it's something in your soul. Your soul, I'm going to skip that for a second and pop right to your spirit. Your spirit is the part of you, Scripture says, that God created to meet with him. Scripture says that God is spirit, and those who worship him would worship him in spirit and truth. God is spirit and wants to meet with your spirit. And so your spirit connects with God, your body connects with the world, and the soul is the thing in between that is meant to connect with God, be filled with God's spirit, so that it enables you to connect with the world. Does that make sense? We're going to walk through it a little bit more because I want us to get it because these are the parts. The soul, the spirit, the body... There's a spark plug in there somewhere that maybe you're overlooking that we need to be aware of because as we check, it's possible that one of these areas, God is saying, needs attention. Just, there we go. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way 
and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. I need you to see this, and just, we're just going to leave that scripture up for a minute. I need you to see that God is doing something in your life right now. God, from the very beginning of the moment that you took a first breath or even that you were created, God started working to do this. This is God's purpose for your life, that you would be filled with his peace and made whole in your body, your soul, and your spirit. That means that God intends to affect every part of you and fill you with his peace and give you power and his goodness and his presence to impact the world. But it, he wants to work in the individual parts. And if something is not working, if something is a little bit in your spirit, your body, or your soul, it's likely that he's saying, hey, let's do a tune-up here. Let's, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's check first. How are you doing? What is God highlighting? Because he's working on this. And so if you want to do, if you want to be like working with God at your back, like, so you know what I mean? Like you've got the momentum with God, leaning on God, then we align ourselves with what God's doing. And what's he doing? He's wanting to bring peace and wholeness to your body, your soul, and your spirit. So if we, uh, the way I want to unpack it, so we're going to unpack these a little bit more, and then we're going to take some time to personally kind of start to think it through. So if you would, on your sheet of paper, just write body, give it some space, write soul, or on your phone, and spirit. And as I talk about these things, let God highlight something for you that he's wanting to highlight. Like maybe as I'm talking about body, you're thinking, you're thinking like, oh, he, yeah, I, I, it's true. I'm, I'm running myself ragged. I'm not getting enough sleep or I'm, I'm, I'm eating way too many McDonald's french fries. Or, or, or maybe you're thinking like, yeah, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing too many push-ups. That's the problem, right? <laughs> Or maybe, maybe as I talk about the soul, you're thinking about your emotions and, and your connections. I'll unpack these, but as something gets highlighted for you, you write it down because that's God letting you know what he's highlighting to help you be whole and to know his peace. Let's pray. God, as we unpack this a little bit more, I pray not that it would be so much my voice but that you would highlight something for each one of us because you love us and because you want us to be whole and blameless. And your word says that you're never going to give up. You're going to do it until the day of Jesus Christ, until the very end. And so, God, we ask you today, speak to us because we want to know your peace. We want to be made whole, and not only ho made whole, but to be filled up with energy and, and love and, and courage to touch the world in a way that brings your mercy and your grace to others. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> so let's start with your soul. God is spirit, and in him we worship in spirit and in truth. We start, it all starts in here. It's how God comes to begin. Like scripture actually says that we were dead spiritually, and then when we asked God to, bring, to forgive us, to bring us to life, he made us alive. That's happening in the green circle, in the spirit. That's where life begins. And God always works inside first. So maybe you've been going, I've been trying to do all these things, I've been going to church, I've been doing this stuff, but it's just not clicking. Is it possible that God is saying, hey, let's, let me start to bring life in your spirit first. Take time with me, allow me to stir you, allow me to fill you. If you've never asked me to come in, 
you, you, it's, it's hard to make a dead person do stuff. What if I bring you to life? That's, that's the heartbeat of the gospel. It's what Jesus came to do. Listen to this. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. That's not an image. It's literal. God's spirit comes, joins with our spirit, and says, I want to teach you that you are loved forever. You are a child. Like, let's start there. When you wake up every morning, when you go to bed, no matter whether good things are happening or bad, let's start with the fact that my son died to forgive you. My love for you is so immense that my whole purpose is to bring you to life. Hmm. Romans 8.11 says this, God raised Christ Jesus from the dead. He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living in you. So you can't bypass it. You can, you know, Jesus described the Pharisees in, as, as whitewashed tombs, you know, painting on the outside trying to look good, but on the inside they were dead. And this is what he's talking about. You can't skip the part where God brings you to life because otherwise you're just dragging around a carcass, spiritually, so to speak. God, the God of peace is working to do this in you. So if this is you this morning, you come to church, maybe you've come to church for decades, and you've never had this, had this moment of saying, God, I've been trying to do it on my own, but I need you to bring me to life. That's all it is. But if you need that moment, do that today. When you come for communion and you accept the wafer and the cup, then maybe say, Jesus, would you take my brokenness? and my stuff, and would you bring me to life again? Jesus is bringing you, do, the life that he's doing in the Spirit is he's bringing you to salvation, that he's rescuing you and bringing you to life, and then he's also working to transform you from the inside out. He starts to fill you with love for people that you don't have. He starts to restore your identity and how you feel about yourself. He starts to uh, open up, help you re recognize the things that are defeating you and hurting others through you. That's the process of transformation. But he does it by loving you, filling you with his peace, and helping you to deal with that stuff. All right, so... Your spirit, God's spirit comes and brings you to life. Our experience of God then is his presence. And we're just going to slip ahead. There we go. There we go. Our experience then is they preached last week about God's presence. I love it because this is exactly what we're talking about. God's presence in our lives. God comes and dwells with us, and we just hang out with him, and it starts to fill us up. That's where we, and we do this by worship. We do it with prayer. We do it with Bible study. We, we do it as we uh, go for a walk in the woods, and we're just saying, God, I want to encounter you. Would you fill me with life again? I was reading this, um, this missionary in, in, in uh, Japan in the early 1900s, and he said this, every day when, from when I was young, I would pray, God, turn my heart to you, and you'd be surprised he does it. Why don't you try that? So when your foot first touches the ground in the morning, what if we said, God, turn my heart to you, and watch what he will do, because he will. Worship, prayer, scripture, teaching, coming here, it's how we encounter God, which is our purpose. Okay, next one. Doing all right? I was, I was saying to God this morning, God, why did you have me do a teach on a day when there was a sleepover? <laughs> so I needed those four times where he said body, soul, spirit. So hopefully there's something today that's connecting with you that you will go and say, God is trying to speak to me and draw me closer. Okay. Your soul is the part of you that is meant to connect with God and get filled. It's like a bridge. We are meant to build a bridge between God, our God and our soul, and our soul is our emotions, our will, and our, th our, our thinking, our mind, our will, and our emotions. It's the stuff that you can't see that is going on inside of you. That's your soul. And that 
is the bridge between God, but it's also the bridge between the world around you. So you may find that this is where the greatest battles happen. Because the soul likes to be in control. The soul is happy to take some stuff from God and say, okay, I got it, I, I've watched that video, I can do this. And then keep God over there. And then you're, like, you've got a spiritual part of your life, you've got your family part of your life, you've got those other things, and you keep working on it until it starts to go, put, 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 put. and then the soul goes, what do I do? Or you're experiencing like conflict in your work or in your family or in a marriage or in your relationship and this stuff is happening outside of you and your soul is going, what do I do? I'm torn between God and the world and what do I do? And God intended to fill us up so much, our soul, so that our soul overflows into our body and into the world around us. But if the pressure's outside are too great for the amount you're getting filled up, it gets hard. So your soul, where God intends for us to experience his heart for us, to know who we are and our gifts and know that we're valued, to know that, that God is wanting to remind us, allow us to feel his uh, emotions and to be filled up with his responses. This is where the fruit of the Spirit fits in. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. God in your soul is wanting to fill you with His Spirit and His nature so that it overflows into the world. As you do, that's where the transformation of your life happens. And that's where God... And then your body is how you encounter the world around you. God intends you to be so filled up with his spirit, so transformed with his nature, that when you're touching the world around you, people sense his love, his goodness, his mercy, and his power. That's what this scripture is talking about. May the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. You okay? All right. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. I paid him to say that. <laughs> it gets very expensive some weeks, but it's worth it. <laughs> All of this to say, as we move towards communion, all of this to say, God is working to tune you up because he loves you and because he loves the people around you. God thinks that you are the best meeting place for him and other people. God thinks that the person sitting beside you today is actually the best person to help you meet him too. Just look at the person beside you and go, God? God is working to transform you, not because he doesn't like what he formed in you, but because he sees how much you will accomplish, how much you will reflect his love and his goodness as you get filled up. So tune-ups matter. Tune-ups allow you to have hope when everything around you looks hopeless. Tune-ups allow you to have joy when everyone around you is discouraged. Tune-ups allow you to see in somebody else what Jesus sees, even though all you see is your frustration and whatever else. Last week, um, there, was, there was a couple things going on in my world, not the church world, but my world. And I was lying awake I, I found this is, you'll know now why those things all happen later in the week. I was lying awake in the night and my heart was hurting and my brain was racing, trying to figure out what, you know, what was going on, how to fix it, all those things, right? So this is going on in real time in my world and that's when I go running and I have these encounters with the podcast and the same story. So I want you to tell you 
that this isn't just like for people in the cheap seats to work on. This is all of us. Every one of us, if you are breathing, God is working to do this. And don't you think it would be a lot easier to make it through life if we worked with what God was working on? Don't you think it would be a lot easier to use your motor going full and not have to do so much work to just keep it going? Don't you think your friendships would be more full of God's love and goodness and you would be able to receive what God wants to give you through them if you allow God to make you receptive to him and receptive to flow out into the world? Okay. That's it. I'm going to put up these questions. Uh, there they are. And uh, I'm just going to invite Dave to start playing. What I want you to do, we're going to, we're going to sing a song for you right now as we prepare for communion. But communion is this beautiful time where Jesus said, you know, bar none, I did this for you. I died to save you. I died to forgive you. I love you. All you have to do is ask, and I will start doing this work of transforming you. This isn't, this is you driving your car into the mechanic and saying, help, spiritually. And it's God that comes and does the work. But he wants you to realize, he wants you to recognize and ask, oh God, I haven't been making time for you. I haven't been making space in my life. Oh God, I'm all caught up with anxiety and fear. I'm questioning my identity. And, and, and I'm listening to what everybody else says about me instead of you. God wants the one who made you, the one who loves you, the one who gave his life for you to inform all of those questions first and let that flow out into how you interact with the world. It might be that maybe God is just highlighting the fact that your body is tired and needs a rest or needs better food or needs to make some space for some good friendships. Take some time as, as the song goes on. We're, Steve, we're going to leave the questions up and not put up the words for the song, okay? Would you pray with me? We're going to start by praying about this, and, and then we're going to take a little bit of time to pray for our world, the things that our, our bodies touch, this world around us, that God loves so much that he gave you to be in your French groups, your schools, your workplaces, that God placed you in the midst of your neighborhood that God gave you a heart for the world around you. God loves the world so much that he gave his son, and God loves the world so much that he is giving his son through you. So Jesus, it is no small thing. It is not just for our own benefit that we pray today that you would forgive us and cleanse us when we've allowed the worries and fears and battles of the world to run over the bridges of our lives and keep us from you. When we've allowed you to stay at arm's distance, taking just enough from you <laughs> so that we can go and keep in control ourselves. Or God, that we have fo focused so much on the struggles that we're facing in our health, in our f relationships, our, our worry about the future, our providing for our present. These are real things, God, that you meant to give us hope for, to fill us with your spirit, to, to give us your leading and direction. And so, God, would you, first of all, 
fill our spirits. Unite our spirit with yours. Make us alive in you. And then in all of these areas that feel like a battle, help us to wait on you until you fill us with your love where we have anger or resentments or hurts until we are filled with your joy where we have had only discouragement until we are filled with hope where we have only um, had fear we're heading into a new fall and we don't know what to expect with our with our world with our <laughs> with so many things but we know that we can expect you to be working on us that we might know your peace and your love and be made one with you body soul and spirit god today i i want to pray for the kingdoms of this world and especially thinking of Britain and the Commonwealth as they change leaders. We pray for comfort for those who are grieving. We pray for that First Nations community in Saskatchewan and the violence and the pain and the loss that happens there, but in some ways how that just reflects a lot of pain and violence that's been experienced over decades. God, we pray for, for your healing and your comfort and your peace. We pray for the places in our world that are in conflict. And God, we don't know how, how to change those things, but we do know that when we pray, you hear and you raise up in us a desire to make a difference and so we pray we pray for your peace we pray for your comfort we pray for miracles to happen hmm. would you take a moment and just you know be aware of who you're who you are touching in your world Think about your family. Think about your neighbors. Think about your work, your school. Think about the people there that God loves so much that he is giving you to them. And would you pray for them? Don't be surprised this morning if, as you were listening and wanting to hear what God might be saying, that some, an idea stirred up in your thought, heads of, I could do this to make a difference. Don't be surprised if that sort of thing happens. That is how God works. That's how God speaks to you. Take note of thoughts or ideas uh, or people that jump to your mind as we talk this morning. God is moving to give you movement. God is moving to stir you and prompt you to make a difference and to allow him to f overflow through you to someone else. So Jesus, especially today, I pray uh, for this body, this group of people, that what you are stirring in us today, the ideas and thoughts of how we might see something transformed, that you would do that, uh, that you would write that on our hearts now that you would not let us let that slip away or forget it because we're hungry or because we have something else to do. God, you are speaking. Help us to take note and take seriously what you are saying. And God, we also pray for those who, as we talked about body, as we talked about soul, as we talked about spirit, that if there is one of those areas that you're highlighting, help us to reach out to people we trust to say, hey, would you help me figure out what God is doing in this? Would you help? Would you pray for me? Would you walk with me? Would you help me to do this? I don't want to do this alone. Jesus, 
gathered his disciples together, he didn't want them to do it alone either. In fact, Jesus didn't want to do ministry alone. He gathered a group of people to walk with him in ministry. And he, uh, the night before he was crucified, he took a piece of bread and he broke it. And it was a picture. He said, this is my body broken for you. I pray that today as we take communion, you would realize that God who is spirit became one with us, spirit, soul, and body, and was broken out of love for us so that he could heal us of our brokenness, forgive us for our mistakes, and transform us in his goodness. The body of Christ broken for you. And after the, after the meal, he filled up a cup, and he blessed it, and he thanked God for it, and he said, this is my blood poured out for you for your forgiveness. Drink this and remember me. One time he, one time he said that, that he was, he was uh, filling us with new wine, f making us new. And so maybe as you drink the cup this morning, you would maybe hand to him the old things and say, Jesus, bring me, make me alive in my body. Make me alive in my spirit. Make me alive in my soul. We're going to uh, serve it. We're going to have three stations at the front. Um, there's four sections, so you're going to get confused. Uh, but this is how we'll do it. Uh, come to the two side aisles, and just just to keep things flowing, uh, if, if there's somebody at the aisle on the side, come to the center. And then, so kind of come on the outside and come back on the inside. But most of all, it would be kind of great if we bump into each other because we're meant to do this together, right? So don't worry about getting the dance steps right. God isn't worried about it. We're not worried about it. Most of all, we want you to be able to come, offer yourself, and let God start to do the work that he's been wanting to do in you and me. God, would you bless this time? Would you bless our receiving? Would you bless our talking together as we do, would you actually make this a moment where you start to tune us up and tune our hearts to you, our minds to you, so we think like you think, and our bodies that we might touch the world around us, and people would know that you are here for them. Amen. stand together. Hmm. Before I start singing this, I, I feel like um, some of us maybe are connecting with that thing of like, Oh, like, the pressure on the outside is, is overrunning my soul. Your feelings are more determined by what's going on around you than by what God is doing and saying. And so I just want to pray for us today a little bit more. Whether it's uh, your thinking about yourself as you think and it feels overwhelming or you're dealing with something or you're it's for someone else what if the good God who loves you who came for you and is moving before you what if God is working for good and what if there is reason for hope not in what you have to make happen, but as you invite God into it, what God might do. So may the God of peace fill you completely, body, soul, and spirit. Now, 
and every day. And may his love, the things he is working on in you, so overflow that others might go, that God God hasn't forgotten me. God loves me. God is working in my life too. May God give us a glimpse of how incredibly delighted he is to work in your life and work through your life. Jesus, come. Come.